Psalm 73, 77, and 78. I'd like to take a look at Psalm 78 because it gives us a chance to, and this is always good to do whenever we can, take a look at the big picture of what Israel is going through. It's almost like in Psalm 78 we have a midterm exam or a midterm review so that people can stop and ask what has been happening and what has God wanted us to do with our own story. Um, it really comes to us in, I like to use, I guess, the idea of a big story. Um, some have used the word meta narrative. Um, even the word framing story, I think, would be a good way to say it, because really what we're looking for is a narrative into which every piece of the story can fit. So maybe the word framing narrative is the best way to say it. Let me react, in fact, to a common statement that I've heard when listening to teaching over the years that the Bible's big story, at least at the beginning, begins with creation, crisis, and then covenant. Genesis 1, Genesis 3, Adam's sin, and then Genesis 12, Abraham's covenant. I believe what we'll see in Psalm 78 are these two ideas switched. So let's do it. It begins in verse 5. This is all in Psalm 78. In verse 5, we have Jacob mentioned, and this is God choosing Jacob. Creation's assumed, and the covenant, notice, is really right off the bat. God chose Jacob, and he is going to work with Jacob or Israel as a nation. Then we move up to verse 13, where we hear about the Exodus. This, of course, is the greatest event um, in the history of Israel, looking back, that is where God chooses or saves Israel from uh, the, the, the Egyptian slavery. Well, of course, things go south, and we hear in verses, and I'm just going to put the list here, 8, 17, 22, and 38, or 37, the general idea of unfaithfulness. In fact, the word unfaithfulness is found in each of those verses. Aman, with the negative in front of it. Not faithful. That's the crisis. Notice again the order. Creation, covenant, and crisis. Um, based upon the expected faithfulness of these people of Israel to Yahweh. Well, coming out of this time, and there's a lot of ways to describe this unfaithfulness in Psalm 78, but coming out of this, we have, and I would put it higher if I could, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it here. In verse 55, we have Joshua's conquest. This would be when they came into Israel and defeated the nations that were living there. Again, it would be considered a, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of the ebb and flow of the story of Israel, all in Psalm 78. Well, then we have, interestingly, in verse 60, a reference to Shiloh. Now, that probably is the destruction of the tabernacle in Shiloh in 1 Samuel 4 or so. Remember when the ark was stolen. When God forsook, and this will be mentioned elsewhere as well, when God forsook Shiloh or forsook the tabernacle, it was the next, shall we even say, lower point than the wilderness wanderings that Israel had experienced. That was a time coming out of the judges and in the beginning of Saul's reign where Israel in general was not being faithful at all. They were serving other gods. They were worshiping, clearly, other deities. But then notice how the psalm ends. And again, I wish I could put this even higher, but it's verses 70 through 72, and I'm going to read them to you. He chose David his servant, taking him from the sheepfold, to shepherd Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he, God, shepherded them according to the integrity of his, David's, heart, and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. I'm going to put them in quotes because what's going to be happening in the stories to come in the Old Testament is that once David dies, David will still be mentioned as the king to come. It's though David has this slot or this, this uh, uh, position, even if it's not the actual David, that the Jew, the Israelite, is to look forward to as a final solution to their own story. 
All right, so what does this story invite us to do? And I want you to think of my answer in terms of how the gospel, how the New Testament will someday put Jesus into this very kind of a story. Does this story invite you to believe something? Or, let me recommend something even stronger than mere belief. I believe this story invites you to participate, to join in the same story that's being told, in the end, giving your loyalty to the one that God has given us as our loyal king. Music